Yeah! Yeah! Uh, feels good, doesn't it? <clears throat> okay. Um, when you drop over the side of the boat, you see the fishers, it's usually the first thing that grabs your attention. For me, three questions come to the fore. Uh, where are they from? What do they do? And does it really matter what they do? Um, in terms of where they're from, you, you can basically trace them the same way as you do humans. If you watch television and it's, who do you think you are, well, you can do the same kind of thing with fishes. You know, what do they think they are and where are they from? Well, you can trace their ancestry. And what I did just recently is I went over to Italy, and there you get the ancestor of this beast. This is Zanklus, the Moorish idol. We all recognize it from the movie. It was Gil in the, the movie Nemo. But this beast, its nearest relative is the one on the top left-hand side. That's what it looks like, it's, its sister group, as it were, 50 million years ago. That's a fossil Zanklus. These two were swimming around together on the coral reefs that were over Italy. So that's its long distant ancestors. That's where it used to be. So that's where the, the start was, as it were. But we can also try and address what the actual individuals we see today and where they came from, again, using TV as our guide. And we look at something like CSI, we take DNA out of the specimens, <clears throat> and we can reconstruct their relationships. At the same time, we can put onto that where they occur, and we can reconstruct their history. So you can work out where people are from in terms of their DNA. You can do exactly the same thing with fish, and we can reconstruct the history of these various fishes and say where they were from. And what we've done is we've done this for a whole range of groups, and we know that in Australia, we're just south of this biodiversity hotspot. There's lots of species up there. The brighter red it is, the, the more species you find there. And what's on the right-hand side is a summary of what that hotspot has looked like through time. So the colors suggest that in the bottom, 35 million years ago or more, most of the species were coming from somewhere else. They were, they were coming into the area from Italy and over in Western Europe. Then they started to develop. We got much more survival and origination in that location. And in recent years, they've started to export species or lineages, and they've moved out around the Pacific and the Indian Oceans. And what we're seeing today are these species that have moved out. <clears throat> so what it means is when you look at the barrier reef, we'll try it, we'll look at fish like this. Are these Aussie fish? or are they from elsewhere? And the reality is that, like me, they're actually ecological migrants. They came from elsewhere. So they've moved to Australia looking for coral reefs, found them and stayed. But the thing is, we, we judge in Australia people largely by what they do, not where they come from. So, you know, for example, me, if, if I won a medal, it'd be Aussie Dave. And you can tell I'm an Australian because it's a silver medal. So, <laughs> you know, it, it makes us what we are, but you, 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 you go and gate crash one, you know, housewarming party, you make one little mistake, and it's English-born academic. So, the worst insults you could find. Uh, so, the bottom line is, when you see these fishers, are they really Aussies, or are they not? Well, depending on what they've done, we, we may change our minds. In reality, you could say they're immigrants uh, of Italian and Indonesian descent, but it's what they've done since they've been here that's made the world of difference. That's what's making them magical. Now, in terms of reef fish, you all know I like to talk about these fish and what they've done for the reef and why they're valuable. Uh, parrotfish clean it and batfish eat the weeds. But my new hero is this one. It's a, a rabbit fish, that beast. What it does is something that a lot of other fishes, hang on, I'm just going to drink water. What a lot of other fishes can't do is it feeds in holes. Now, that's really important. The holes on a reef are where a lot of the young corals live. And it's also where, where a lot of the nasty algae lives. So those little interstices on the reef are critically important. These rabbit fishes keep them clean. Now, scientists haven't been paying a lot of attention to these for a long while, but it's really important. What it's like, it's like having something that comes out at night and it cleans the gaps between your teeth or it takes the fungus out between your toes. It keeps you a, a lot cleaner. What they're basically doing is they're cleaning the cracks on the reef. So, you know, I can see the poster now, clean cracks for a healthy reef. They're, they're doing something that's really important and they're keeping the reef going. So, and it's, it gets better, they don't like to be seen cleaning cracks. For some reason, they, what they, he's looking at me. 
think so, there might be some questions after this one. I hope I not. So they get down there, they go in there, clean out the cracks, but they go around in pairs. So what happens is they go around in pairs and one of them watches the other one while it cleans a crack. <laughs> so there's one in a hole, the other one's watching, is watching out to, you know, make sure nothing is amiss. The beautiful thing about this, what I really like, is that the pear-forming, crack-cleaning fish have really deformed heads. And you can identify the, what their activities are by the shape of the head. So there's a nice study done. So this was discovered by my students. They also worked this one out. If you look at the shape of the head, the ones that are in pairs and doing the cleaning have got these long snouts. They've got long snout and depression in front of their eyes. So you can identify which those beasts are. It also applies to other groups like surgeon fishers. They do the same. And what's really magical about this is, if you go back 50 million years to Italy, pull out a surgeon fish fossil, what you get is, is the same head shape. I can't guarantee it, but there's a fair chance that the fossil fishes that we find in Italy 50 million years ago, they were there in pairs, cleaning the cracks. It seems to be one of the most important roles on a reef, and one that established very, very early on. So it would appear that coral reefs have always had the clean cracks, and it's kept them healthy up until this day. So, what does it all mean? Does it really matter? Well, yes, it does, because sometimes it goes wrong. Um, this is Orpheus Island. I usually like to study this on a global scale, but I want to give you an example from 80 kilometers up the road. Orpheus Island um, is a nice place to go. We take the students, and we go up there, and I'm able to demonstrate how effective the fishes are. We transplant algae. We put them out on the reef a big bunch of algae like this. We come back 24 hours later. This is a, a technique uh, pioneered by Terry Hughes. And it shows how the reef works, because you come back the next day, everyone's delighted. Da -da, that was a rock covered in weed. 24 hours later, it's nice and clean. We did this in 2011, and the fish weren't overly happy to do the cleaning. We did it in 2012. The weed was still there. So the weed was not being removed. So we thought, ah, this is a bit worrying. Maybe the reef is losing resilience. We have a technique to test how resilient the reef is. So what we do is we get little lumps of rock and we transplant those. And those lumps of rock get cleaned. So most of the rock is covered in this stuff. It's called the epilithic algal matrix, a very fine turf. And the parrot fishers shave this down. So you get a hairy rock, you stick it on the reef, parrot fishers take it off, it's beautiful. Four hours later, half of it's gone. We repeated this on Orpheus Island last year and Nothing happened. In the past, to reduce it by half, now there was no effect, and if anything, it grew longer. If this kind of thing is going on all over the island, all of that turf is going to be getting longer. So we went and had a look, and what was happening is the turf is about 100% longer all over the place. The island is getting hairy, it's getting weedy, and all of that nasty stuff that grows in cracks is starting to expand. So it was looking a little bit worrying, and the obvious answer is, well, there's no fish. The fish have moved on. So what we did is put down cameras. We filmed the fish to see what was happening, and they're all still there. The, the fish haven't moved. They just don't bother feeding anymore. So what this means in terms of how they're doing their job, parrot fishers, 86% decrease in feeding. The rabbit fishers, the crack cleaners, 98% decrease. They're not doing the job. The reef is in trouble. Something's amiss. So what this basically means is that it's, the fishers are there, they're trying to do the job for you. I described this to a friend and he said it's like a, a marriage that's just failed. Everything's in place, the tables are all set and the curtains are still the same, but she's just not happy anymore. That's what's happening on the reef. It's like a relationship. You come down at breakfast and you sit at the table, she's there, she looks at you, but she's not eating. You know something's wrong. She gives you a... <laughs> I'm not revealing too much about my private life, don't worry. Um, and she, she even squeezes out a cute little smile. But it, 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 it doesn't work. You know you've made a mistake. You've got to work out what the mistake is. That's what the reef is telling us. We've made a mistake. We've got to work out what it is. And that at essence, the reason it's important is that this is a 50 million year old relationship and something has gone desperately wrong. We've got to work out what and fix it quick. Now, the good news is, that's a good line, you should use that, that it's not too late. We can still do it because everything's in place. It's all intact. It's just the way they're behaving. We've got to work out what's gone wrong, 
change their behaviour, and hopefully we'll get the reef back to normal. Thank you very much.